Hello, everybody, and welcome to Movie Guys Podcast presents our review of Sausage Party. I hope you guys get your fill because I'm going to get my fill. The reason why I said that is because it was a poster. I'll talk about that later. This is Jordan. I'm along with Eric and Ed. How are you guys doing tonight? Just the tips. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Wait, wait the- does the poster really say get your fill? Uh, go on Wikipedia right now, type in Sausage Party. And the sausage is in between the buns and says, get your fill. Oh, okay. I have seen that poster. The one that I see, the one that everyone sees is the uh, the kind of uh, the play on the erect sausage. And it says, a hero will rise. Mm-hmm. Yes. My favorite poster was, I went to, quick story. This is one of my top ten greatest movie theater experiences of all time so far in my life. My brother, his wife, and my wife and I, we go at a 10.30 p.m. showing, <laughs> the last show of the night. And there's a couple of families there. Like, there's like five, six years old. So I'm watching them outside of the theater and talking to my brother like, oh, my God, this is not going to happen. And the posters for this yeah. is amazing. There was, there, was, there was a gigantic poster. You know how they advertise. It's a huge poster it, in the middle of the theater with the female taco and it says she likes um she likes beef or fish oh (laughs) and and my brother and i get the metaphor and we're laughing our asses off and there's little kids to this just so you know within the first 15 minutes of the movie those families took their kids and left but well, uh, they were yeah. obviously terrible parents. The first, the first five minutes of this movie is a giant song about racism. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious too. <laughs> that was, and the, even the callback so, to that was was pretty pretty funny too. Mhm. But no, it was ridiculous. I mean, guys, the reason why this was so much fun, I watched the audience more than I actually watched the flick. I mean, <laughs> it, it was. People, people were throwing popcorn at the screen because they were laughing hysterically. <laughs> One girl literally behind me said, I got to go to the bathroom. I just peed myself when she was with her other girlfriends. It, I mean, you, you, you just can't make this shit up. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. So, yeah. Um, but I actually will say this, though. This is going to be a very hard movie for me to review because this movie, I think, is very important. But I don't know if I actually like the flick. So I guess that's something we're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk about it. I mean, it's 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 got a lot of good reviews. I mean, but I think again, going into it, you already know what it's about. Well, at least I hope you do. Like, obviously, those parents probably did. No, but, they didn't. But uh, I mean, with when you hear a movie with these names attached, you kind of know what you're getting into. No matter what, like the subject material is, you just kind of know it's gonna more likely going to be a stoner comedy. <laughs> Oh, well, not to this extent, and I and I kind of want to hold off what I mean at towards the later on in the show. But yes, they I agree smoke weed out of a kazoo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which I mean, I'm getting inspired to be honest with you. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to give that a try. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead. And, I'll go ahead and share my opinion right now. This is why I wanted to wait for all three of us to talk about this because you two may think I'm absolutely batshit insane. My brother thinks I'm batshit insane. I think for the year of 2016, this is the most important movie of the year. (laughs) I really feel that way. And I will will explain why. I know this is funny, but it's actually kind of serious for me. This is the second hard, raunchy, very adult rated R movie that has killed it at the box office and has killed it at critics' reviews. This has never happened in our lifetime, guys. Right? Uh, Are you referring to the the first one being uh, Deadpool or... Absolutely. This movie has racism because the sauerkraut hates juice. Uh, we got food that's smoking pot. And to spoil it, there is a food orgy. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. This food orgy. It, it was in- incredibly like. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. I want. I'm not gonna say racist. Well, it played to it. I mean, like obviously the bagel was Jewish. The falafel was Middle Eastern. You know, uh-huh. the, the bottle of fire water was Native American. That was yes. pretty, that was pretty funny. <laughs> yes, the taco Mexican. And- you know, it's like it, it plays to the to you know to the regional foods. And this movie was only made for 19 million, and I checked it out yesterday. I don't know if it's changed or not today. 
but it's already grossed almost forty million dollars. Yeah. And it's like I know that's not Deadpool money, but it's like, oh my god, that's why this movie is so important. Anybody, everybody needs to see this because they get away with so much shit because it's food. Guys, seriously, inside of a movie theater, there's a huge poster with a taco that says she prefers beef or fish. How are they getting away with <laughs> Isn't this? That, that kind of fucked up. Like, if it's a cartoon, they get to get away with it. But if it was yes. live action, they would get in, in trouble, like, a, a shit for it, you know? But what's, uh, what, what's kind of funny about it is I, I watched uh, I watched an interview with with Seth uh, with Seth Rogen on uh, the TV show on HBO every any given Wednesday. Um, oh yeah, you know, and uh, his interview he basically he basically said that you know anytime you make a movie like this, there's some negotiating involved with the studios. Like, you know, you take you you think you you introduce what you think you know is going to be the least they'll take or the, the most amount they'll take in terms of like raunchiness. And so he goes in like with the incredibly what he called low ball offer. They cut maybe 40 seconds out of the movie, he said. And so he was like, all right, that works for me. We're good. We'll take it. Yeah. So this movie, this, they didn't cut anything out. This is no. exactly what they wanted to do. And yes, and, 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 and that's why I made a statement about this is so important. And for the first time ever in our lifetime, this is happening because this is – a movie revolution. I, I feel like that. I'm not trying to be so philosophical on it, guys, but hear me out on this. And to the fans, I know I'm sounding like I'm insane, but the fans are sick and tired of every single movie trying to be Dark Knight. We don't want gritty all the time. We don't want real all the time. I'm going to spend $10 or more. I want to be fucking entertained. I'm tired of this, oh, I'm depressed bullshit. You know, like, we don't want that anymore. No, and no, I'd I, say time out. I hate to interrupt you, but I think it's it's people don't want a PG-13 movie because people are so desensitized in all ages by the internet nowadays. It's tough to be a parent. I wouldn't know. But I do know that if I was, you know, in fifth grade with the internet the way it is now and the way that smartphones and everything the way they are now, I, I would be running a fucking mock online. And I would be... <laughs> You know, be desensitized by all this. And I think that uh, we're just tired of a PG-13 movie. Swearing is Dude, funny. This really? movie, rated R movie, is is funny. Like even when you hear it in the first part, when they start, you know, singing with like, "Oh fuck yeah!" yeah. Oh, when you hear like a, a the little thing of a mustard, just go, "Oh fuck yeah!" Like that's that's hilarious. You know, instead of him going, "Oh yeah, I got picked." No, what's funnier? Yeah, I got picked. Or yeah, fuck yeah, I got picked. <laughs> like. <laughs> you know, swearing is swear, it it adds to it. It it adds depth. It adds you know expression to it. And, uh, and, and I, yeah, I, I agree with you. Anymore. I mean, like this. And that being said, this is nowhere near a kids' movie. It's not safe for children. It you know. So the idea of it being like a cartoon, I agree with you that us as adults wanted a comedy that's non PG thirteen. Wanted a what you know, like we were talking about Suicide Squad last time. If that movie were non PG thirteen, wasn't trying to appeal to a mass audience, it would have been so much better, most likely. And it, it, they, Seth Rogen basically just had his run of what he wanted to do. He he smoked weed with his buddies and made the dirtiest movie possible about food. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I agree with you. I mean, you, I was if this movie were PG thirteen, I wouldn't have seen it. We wouldn't have even bothered talking about it, and I would have fought the two of you tooth and nail about going to see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. I you know, was, so I'm... I, yeah, go yeah. ahead, I'm sorry. No, yeah, I'll hammer and agree. But can I please add my favorite part of the whole movie, my favorite joke? Sure. It's the peanut butter with the uh, with the jelly. Oh, God! That was, that I'm was gonna hilarious. Fix you. I'm going to fix you. It's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> so, there, there was a lot of funny shit that happened in the movie. Like, I, I mean... A lot of funny yeah, shit. Okay, a lot, yeah. lot of funny that, that, that moments. I think uh, I went to go see it in kind of a... Uh, um, well, I guess, I don't know, it's, it's a mixed theater. I know this very well just because given the, the region that I'm in, it's, it's mixed. Mixed, I mean racist. A lot of, it's a very black and white movie theater. And so there were a few parts that were for the whites, a few people that were for the, for the black people. And, the, and, the, and more namely, Mr. Grits, when he was fucking the box of crackers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and he kept on I calling him crackers, laughing. which we know what that meant. Fucking crackle, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like hilarious because as he's doing it, and he's really giving it to that box of crackers too <laughs> and the little yes, crackers that are falling out too but I mean obviously in the theaters so people laughed a little bit harder than others but laugh out loud fucking moment I thought it was hilarious 
my my personal favorite joke, other than I mean, there, there were two. Number one, the 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 movie itself having the fact that the that the antagonist was literally a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that was hilarious. But my favorite one-liner joke was at the end during the like when they were killing all the humans. And yeah. there was some blood on the floor, and a tampon stepped in the blood on the floor. <laughs> and, like, she saw all the blood, the tampon did, and it said, ew. It stepped in the blood, and it got all soaked up, and it, like, hulked up. It's like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that, that was disgusting, yeah. but it was fucking hilarious. A lot of that, a lot of that was shit was, was great. But you know what? After a while, because it started off, like, you're, you're into it. You're like, okay, okay, I get it. This is pretty funny. Let's keep on going, keep on going. And then uh, the more and more it gets, the more you're just like, okay, this is this is like getting to be like a movie, I knew the movie was already ridiculous, but now it's just like, okay, this is fucking ridiculous. Okay, this is really fucking ridiculous. Okay, this is like just dumb, stupid, ridiculous. Like it keeps on <laughs> going yeah. up the level of ridiculousness. And uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. But you know, like like where else? Where, like where else would you take it? Like I, I feel like when they were writing it, of course, probably all stoned is is you know like fuck a guy stoned but <laughs> nice nice i feel like nice. they, they're just like eh, fuck it let's just i don't know let's make them kill humans let's make them just like i don't know you know let's make it let's so that when you smoke bath salts that you, <laughs> you can talk to the food and it's like eh, and, I don't know, how are we gonna end it i don't know let's have them go into a portal yeah and they go into stargate <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, since you guys have brought that up, let's talk about that for a second. And for the fans that are listening, if you have not seen this movie yet, this is a different movie than what I thought I was going to get. And the quick literal synopsis, since you guys are bringing this up, is we got Frank and who's Kristen Wiig's character? What's her name? The bun? The hot dog bun? Betty? Is that yeah. what her name is? Uh, no, it's uh, what's uh, – oh, my – it's something Bunsen. Not Bunsen, but okay. <laughs> anyway. Bunsen. <laughs> well, <laughs> Bunsen? Well, let me, let me bring up the full the full cast list right now. But isn't it like Betty? But something? anyway, Betty, I think is her name. But so you get so you get Frank, who's a hot dog. Brenda. And hit Brenda. You get Frank, who's a hot dog, and then you get Brenda, who is the hot dog bun, and they're both in packages with other of their friends of the hot dogs and whatever. Right Anywho, um, their whole purpose in life is to get chosen so they can go into the great beyond, so that he can put himself inside of her buns. <laughs> and and they think that being chosen is the greatest thing in the world, but turns to find out is that humans are eating them, therefore killing them. And then that's where I thought the movie was going to be. I thought it was going to be uber violent and just eat, humans eating people. But where the movie changed for me was the fat guy, the stoner guy who takes the bath salts, right? Yeah. They chop off his head. They chop off his fucking head. <laughs> this is not because I literally thought this movie was going to go, okay, food's getting killed. They're going to, they're going to meet a guy who can talk to food and he's going to be a food advocate and it's going to be a joke on Pixar. That was the complete opposite of what we got. Yeah. I Pause did. for one second. Did you notice the Dixar bumper yes. sticker yeah. on the truck? <laughs> I did. I didn't, I did um, not expect yeah, the murder spree to happen at the end. No, I mean, my fucking God. But my brother laughed out loud uh, when the guy who works at the uh, grocery store, um, it was in the beginning of the film, he's walking by, and he's just like, oh, I hate my fucking job. And, yeah. and my brother looks at me and goes, we've all done that. <laughs> and it's just, <laughs> it's just Apparently there was, uh, that was Paul Rudd. That was Paul Rudd? Yeah. See, I was funny. Uh, Edward Norton was the Jew. He yeah. is far from Jew. I mean, but everyone can do a Jew voice. It's like, you know, there, there are certain default, like, accents that you can do that people just can, you know, you can do. Everyone can do a gay accent. Everyone can do... I can't uh, do a Jew. All I can say is my sugar nuts. Well, there you go. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Jews are more of just, uh, like, just nasally, and you just got to be unsure. That's it. Just be nasally I'm unsure. Back. Just, you know... No, like, I mean, like... Nazi sauerkraut. I mean, come on. That was pretty funny. I mean, but also I like the fact that they tried to do something different in this movie too. Is they tried to get actually philosophical, which I thought was interesting because they're like, wait a minute. So if we just all got along and had a big orgy, then everybody would be happy, right? Right. 
Well, I think it was it was more so that they're just kind of accepting, just like, uh, well, this is the way the real world is, and you know, it, it, they're pretty much, I would say, more like a Sodom and Gomorrah type thing. They they threw religion out of the fucking window, and they're just like, yeah, let's just start fucking. <laughs> Yeah, let's just start. I mean, like, some of the stuff that they were doing was blowing my mind with that orgy. Um, it's just... Give you some I ideas mean, there, Jordan? I mean... <laughs> I didn't know some of those positions was possible. Baby number two what, is surely coming. <laughs> I gotta get when my the bowl. taco shell puts the sausage on as a strap-on and then fucks the falafel and the bagel and the bun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that happened. <laughs> it happens. Hey, hey, Ed, Ed, do me a favor. Say that sentence one more time, please. <laughs> when the taco shell puts uh-huh. the sausage on as a strap on and fucks yeah. the falafel and the bagel and the hot dog bun all at once. Yeah. Ed, how old are you? I'm 28. <laughs> so when you're 90 years old on your deathbed, you will know that you have said that sentence at one point in your life. Congratulations. I mean, because I watched this <laughs> fucking movie. That's what everyone's talking about is, is the orgy scene at the end because that's like where it's just like, well, again, I think the writers are just like, well, what the, what do we do now? I don't know. How about we all make them fuck? How about we just... Yeah. Well, we got, we got, okay, guys, we got to fill 10 minutes. We got to fill five minutes. I mean, what are we going to do? It's just like, oh, let's have them fuck. You know, it just seems it just seems like something like totally they just potheads to just be around and be like, yeah, I'm kinda horny right now. Let's just make them all <laughs> everything. No, I mean everything. I want everything to start fucking. Yeah. I love the fireball uh, liquor, uh him being the uh he'd been the chief. And I also like how they stole from the Simpsons, but it was still funny when the chief goes, Hey how are ya? Hey how are ya? Hey how are ya? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean that was great. And he's telling Frank the truth that the great beyond is a sham since they're liquor they don't expire so they've been here since the quote-unquote <laughs> dawn of time and uh, when people got chosen they were afraid to, i'm sorry when food got chosen they were afraid to so they made up this stupid lie to make people happy and i'm like wow so that's what the bible is that's what this movie's saying but nah, i mean th- there was a lot of religious undertones or mm-hmm. overtones i should say i should say uh really in the entire movie, and, um, again, it's a good way of doing it, just because it's a cartoon, and people seem to be a lot more lax on a cartoon, and you can just kind of date, suit, or <laughs> say or do whatever you want in a cartoon, it goes to show you, obviously, in an orgy that we saw, or a lot of the, uh, um, the, the religious parts of, of, uh, what they're trying to lie about, and, you know, the, the song that they, they sung, and people were just like, well, I'm happy, yeah. With the other way, like if we're gonna die, I'd rather be happy knowing that, or uh, I'd rather be happy with this lie than the truth. Absolutely, I know I agree with you. Um, do you guys do you guys both like the original Toy Story flick? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Who the hell doesn't? Well, you know the scene when they're in uh, Sid's backyard and all the uh, toys that've been destroyed and blow up come back like zombified and kind of creepy. You oh know what yeah. I'm how how um how creepy that was. I think that's the one thing this movie was missing, was when he was climbing up through the frozen fish uh, fish section. I think some fish needed to come back and saying help me or whatever to make it like really creepy and fun, because there's no seafood in this at all. And I, I thought that'd be kind of fun. You know, and, and again, it's just like. You think to yourself, because there's a lot of questions that I had, too, and it's like, yeah, what the, what the fuck am I doing questioning this movie? Like, like, you know, who cares? Like, again, everything that was in the movie, like, why? Because you had other objects that were not food that we're talking. A talking condom, a talking douche. Oh, my God, the condom. Thank you for bringing I'm not trying to interrupt you. <laughs> no, no, but... no, it's fine. But you, you had all these, but you didn't have, like, in the kitchen section, you didn't have, like, talking knives or talking appliances or anything else. So you had these two objects, or the tampon, right? Yeah. So you had like, yeah. these three things that are clearly not food items, but they're still alive, but some other things aren't. So, like, what's the limitation? But, again, you, you know, as I'm asking this, I'm like, who, who the fuck cares? Like, did you see this movie? Like, why would it matter? Like, just yeah. just roll with it. It's, there's a purpose for this movie, and it's just to be kind of dumb and stupid and, like, get a laugh out of it. Stoner comedy. Oh, absolutely. No, yeah, which is hard for me to do sometimes, and that's why I said earlier, if I like this movie or not, because, you know, we are reviewers, and it's we, that's what we do. We pick apart. But do you guys remember 
the fucking joke the condom said because I was laughing so hard when I oh saw the God, condom yes. had come in it. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. And I just crap. I didn't even hear what the fucker said, but I'm sure it was pathetic and miserable. Do you he, remember what he said? He said something along the lines of, as I told him not to do it, but they stuck it in me and yeah. they stretched me out and they put me in dark places. And then, and then he finished, and then something about, and then he, you know, he spit in me or something. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, it was something okay. like that. It was obviously, and I, obviously what you think it would be. And also the toilet paper. You don't know what the fuck he did. Yeah, it was funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> so like, okay, so on that, that toilet paper part, when, when it was the people that, that kind of was walking on the floor and then walked back, did you see the, the dead roll that was on? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <I saw> yeah. <laughs> the lifeless roll with his arms and legs just hanging down, just lifeless. That was hilarious. Yeah, limp is all shit. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes, too, is that um, the uh, the guys pass out from bath salts, and um, uh, who was who was the actor that played the uh, short Frank, the guy that was becoming the hero? Barry. Barry, yeah. Did Michael know Sarah. Who it was? It was Michael Sarah. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite jokes was that this this mythical bean shows up. You think it's something awesome, and all of a sudden he goes gum. And this yeah. is a big chew <laughs> of gum. And it's just like, oh my god, that's amazing. And then they T2'd him later in the flick, which was even great. Yeah, Love the fact good. that they T2'd him. And, uh, and they even yeah. play the song <laughs> when they yeah. shoot him in the head. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> um, I love that Barry gets the idea to soak uh, toothpicks full of bath salts and shoot it at him. Right. <laughs> that's like... Like, can that happen? Is that a thing? I don't there, know. There, that was a very low dose, so I wouldn't think so. But again, don't don't question it. Like, okay, go, go right. yeah, he, he was he was a he was a hot dog shooting an arrow full of full of liquid bath salts. Yeah. It might work if you're if you're a mogwai in Gremlins, but it's not gonna okay. work. Mm. Yeah, but again, all right, don't fair don't, don't, fair don't question the movie. Yeah. Okay, I can't question the movie. I can't question the movie. Shit, I did like okay. Um, one thing that I did think that should have been changed, and I guess this is me questioning, but when they were going to the party, that was all the booze that was partying, right? Was that all the liquor yeah. that, was, that was partying? I wonder why the other food never decided to join them. Like, I thought it'd be like, you know, like, again, be like a huge party. You see, like, so, so many questions were because, I mean, again, there's that part when um, Barry and uh, uh, Troy, I guess, is that what it was? The other, the other sausage? When they first got taken home and they were on the windowsill and they're about to jump off, and the lady, yeah. Camel Camille Toe, I think is what the character's name is. <laughs> yeah, her is. name is Camille Toe. Yeah, that, Camille that's what, Toe. That's what I've seen that in the is, credits. That is brilliant. But she takes the knife and she and she pokes one of those sausages. Like, you know, I would you get if you guys are just like coming home from grocery shopping, you know, and you're starting to cook or something like that, and all of a sudden you just look up in your windowsill and you see two Franks just kind of. Stand up on the windowsill. Are you just gonna take a knife and poke at it and then cut it up? No. Like I'd be like, what? No, you're, gonna, you're gonna grab it. You're gonna grab it, right? I, well, I'd be like, what the so. fuck are you doing on the windowsill? How'd you get there? You know, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, Three. don't don't question don't question any parts of uh, when we're what why and how in this movie. Just <laughs> go along with the Three. jokes, go along with the the humor, and that that's it. They're eating children. <laughs> Fucking children. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, By the way, James Franco played the druggie. Yeah. Oh, did he really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know if I like that. No. Well, it's it's a Seth Rogen movie, so James Franco and him are the best buds. Yeah, he got everybody right. here. They got a they got a. I'm looking at the cast right now. It's just like Selma Hayek was the lesbian taco. Yeah. Okay. Bill, Selma Hayek as the taco. Was Bill Hader awesome. was Firewater Tequila and. Uh, El Guaco. Yeah, El Guaco. Danny Mc Danny McBride was the honey mustard who came back from the great beyond. <laughs> Craig uh, Craig Robinson was grits, which is fucking hilarious. Oh, he would. Be I grits. think grits was my favorite character. Yeah, I think grits was my favorite. Character. Grits is really good. Um, I, <laughs> well, it, it goes to show again, like cute characters that are like dirty and vulgar and all this shit are are fucking funny. Even the little Twinkie. Little twink, little thing. That was. Oh yeah, who the hell was that? Who played that guy? Uh, it says here Scott Underwood. It's the same guy who did the uh, the gum as well. Oh. But uh, oh shit, looks like he's. 
Uh, so he's been involved with a lot of stuff, like a lot of kids' movies. Which, speaking of too, like uh, you guys read this, like there's a there's a mix between like, like Seth Rogen and his crew, and then like a bunch of people who pretty much have done like kids' movies and TV shows. So like that guy who was you know, Scott Underwood was like involved in like uh, Adventures of Grim and Mandy, is that what it was? And like Ed and Nettie, the director had directed like a bunch of uh, Thomas the Train Engine. Really. Well, they, I, I wonder if he didn't get his buddies and then just hired a bunch of voice actors. And, and most kids' shows and movies are cartoons, so yeah. they're just voice actors. Yeah, look, look at his credentials. Like, the director of this movie, uh, Greg uh, Tiernan, has done, like, over, like, 30 Thomas, the, Thomas and Friends. <laughs> this is his, actually, as I'm looking at his credentials, oh, no, he's, he's got two other ones, which were Disney's animated storybook, The Hunchback of Notre Dame video game, and Heroes of the Rails. But other than that, it was just Thomas for like, it looks like five he's, or he's six years. He's done nothing but Thomas the Train movies. And then Sausage Party. Wow. And the, the, the other guy who was uh, who's listed as the, the director, he did uh, he, Madagascar, he did Madagascar, Monsters vs. Aliens, Shrek 2. It's <laughs> so yeah, animators, man. Like, uh, people who know how to animate a, you know, or direct an animated movie. It'd be movie. And that's that's one thing I can absolutely say about this movie is it was really well animated too. Like it wasn't like oh, we they were it was the poor voice. animation either. It was it was flaw it was basically like the movies we just mentioned, the Shrek movies, Madagascar, you know, it, it was well animated. No, it definitely was. Now I had uh, there was a, a conversation that was leaked about uh, just how horribly the animators were treated during this movie, during the production of this movie. Uh, they were just, like, uh, subjected to, like, horrible conditions, horrible hours, no overtime, and just, like, uh, just, like, a horrible deadline, and so, without any, any reparation for it. So, they wouldn't get anything, any compensation or anything for it, I mean. Um. Really? Yeah, so they would just, like, be working, like, these long, long hours, having to do this deadline. Uh, Seth Rogen and his crew claimed they didn't really know too much about it, but, um, apparently it's just... I don't know. Apparently, it's an industry thing, though. It's not just from this movie. It's apparently it's a bad industry thing. What? That Ant Man's dog shit? Yeah. Yeah. Here and I'm actually surprised on that because that. Say that again, Jordan. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? You're just far away. Oh, am I? All right. Well, yeah. This one is uh, Washington Post saying that. Uh, uh, that was probably, yeah, it was good, but, um, the animation, oh, animation news site, uh, Cartoon Brew published a Q&A with the directors, and, uh, subject of anonymous fast animators were compiled for new conditions working in the film. Uh, oh, some, some of the animators, uh, some of the animators were uncredited during the film as well, too. Um... No, no, one, no one's going to speak on record, apparently, for failure that it might hurt their opportunities, but this is all just kind of secondhand material or anonymous leaks that were coming to the internet as well, too. Um, that's really rough, man. To work that long in a movie and not get any credit for it in the credits, it's rough. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds awful. Yeah, that so, is pretty shitty. So uh, it says, a hard, uh, aside from harsh working uh, restrictions, uh, being blacklisted is a very real concern. Which is uh, again, but they don't want to out anybody because there's there's no union there. Oh, there's not. No, the animators don't <laughs> have a union. They're pretty much just kept in the basement, and you know. Well, I mean, and, and rightfully so, those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ! I mean, the same reason why Andy Circus will never get a best uh, act, uh, actor nomination because it's not real, right? Yeah, I guess so. How, that's that's rough because he's a lot of the work that he's done has has been amazing. It has. Well, we could ramble on about how amazing this 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 these, these jokes are and stuff, but of course we got to get into our recommends. So I'm interested to see what you guys have to feel about it. Uh, so Ed, since you just saw it tonight, um, do you recommend Sausage Party, Ed? Absolutely. I mean, I think the the best way to go about seeing this. And, you know, I, I would say, like, with your buddies as a guy, maybe maybe not necessarily 100% in theaters, but 
you know, if you've got some some of that Jamaican oregano with your buddies, you know, go ahead and <laughs> you go ahead and you know light some of that up and then watch the movie at home. But uh, nice it, reference. Yeah, I think I think this movie's hilarious. Uh, I think you know it might be the greatest stoner movie since Half Baked. Uh, in terms of like it's it's jokes and it's innuendos and you like some of the a lot of those jokes you have to think about. I did find myself being the only one laughing in the theater at, at points when I saw it. Uh, granted, I was I you know it wasn't like at peak time. There were I think let's see one two there maybe ten other people in the theater when I saw it, but I, I did find myself being the only one catching some of those jokes. Um, so you 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 know you got to sort of be into it to, to see that. But yeah, absolutely, I recommend this movie. All right, Eric. Do you recommend Sausage Party? Uh, I recommend it that you got to see it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not in a rush to go see it again. And if it's like, you know, I, I just don't feel like if it's on TV. Maybe if it's on TV, I'll watch it or something else like that. Or if someone has it on. You know, but I'm not like I'm not going to go out of my way to watch this movie again. Uh, but it was funny. I had a lot of laugh out loud moments. Uh, I, I was entertained front to back from it, you know. But... Um, Again, it was just sheer ridiculousness. I, I think after I saw it, I, I texted you guys and just like that was a what the fuck movie. Like, <laughs> yes, it just kind yes. of you know just you didn't know what to expect, and then it came out and just like well I, I didn't expect any of that, you know. It's <laughs> so I mean it came out on that promise. No matter how you see it, whether I don't I don't care how you see it, whether it's theaters or or at home or whatever. Like I'm not gonna say one way or the other. I just say that yeah, it's one of those movies where you watch it once. You may forget the jokes a week later, but it was still entertaining to watch. I would say mm-hmm. watch it just because, again, it's um, it's kind of new, fresh material, and um, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was entertaining. So yeah, why the hell not? Um, I am teetering on recommend or don't recommend, and the reason because I don't think it's a very good movie. I mean, if you want to go through that aspect, the story's not very good. It's just a bunch of fart jokes and stoner jokes, which I guess is really, really great. So, but I would argue, though, that there is great stoner movies, hence Pineapple Express. Um, So is this anything on par with that? Uh, For me, I guess I have to give this a recommend. Um, I think it's funny. I think if you are a mature adult, you need to see this. Other than that, um, don't bring your kids to the theater like I saw. Just don't do that. It's, it's something you should not bring your kids to go see. Am I right? I mean, come on. Well, no, definitely. I, I feel that this movie would be perfect for when you're on the airplane and there's nothing else to watch. Absolutely. Or if uh, or if Eric, Ed, and Jordan get completely fucking stoned and decide to go to see Sausage Party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I think like, if you're, like, in college or high school, then this movie is for you. Yes, Absolutely. So if I was 10 years younger, I would be like, the greatest movie ever. That would be 19. <laughs> so, but, uh, no, yeah, I enjoyed it. So it was fun. But uh, Eric and Ed, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Uh, we have a couple episodes coming up. We're deciding uh, fans on which one we want to do right now. Uh, but, of course, we'll be back as soon as possible when we get on to our next one. Also, make sure to check us out on movieguyspodcast.com for not only this episode, but you can check out our reviews of Suicide Squad, Star Trek, and also Star Wars The Force Awakens from almost a year ago. And also check out our written reviews. We have game reviews and everything else. And uh, before I end the show, did you guys see the full costume get up with the new Pennywise for it? No, I didn't see the Pennywise. I saw the the, uh, the, the Gang of Losers or whatever the hell they're called. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, Yesterday, BloodyDisgusting.com released... uh, the full costume guy and makeup at Pennywise. Let me look that up. So it's pretty badass. So while you're looking it up, make sure to check us out on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, and also check us out again at movieguyspodcast.com. On behalf of Eric and Ed, this is Jordan. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. Later. Bye.